point if you want to do an introduction, you are welcome to. Okay, so... Um, the man does indeed an introduction. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, uh, right, so that this is the talk uh, about MariaDB, about MariaDB vector, about vector search functionality inside MariaDB. So I'll do a quick uh, introduction into the topics for those who don't know what it is, what it is and what I'm talking about at all. So what is vector search? Vector search is uh, underlying, fun underlying, underlying functionality that powers such uh, user-level user features like semantic text search. That's when you search not for words, but for meaning of the text and whatever you're looking for. Image search, music search, video search in videos. And you can do hybrid too, like you can describe in words what kind of music you want to find, and then it finds you this, or what kind of image you want to find. And it, 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 it's also the book, the technology behind the generative AI, the retrieval augmented generation of generative AI, that is when you use AI to generate the, well, some kind of text or, or the, I don't know, image, whatever, music. And it's retrieval augmented that is, is based on the context that you provide, which is based on the search query that you used to find this context. So this is all is based is uses vector search to provide those features to users. So users themselves, they don't care about this vector search. This is how you implement it. So, and how, it, how this is done using vector search, everything I've had on this slide, like texts, images, music, videos, you use some technology, which nowadays is pretty much always neural networks, but there were technologies 50 years old that could also do it not that efficiently. You convert images and text and audio into vectors. And then you store vectors in database. And when the user wants to search for something, the user describes what the user wants to find using, again, text or images or music or by humming into microphone. You convert this into a vector as well using the same t t technology. And then you use vector search to find a vector against other vectors. And one more important concept, that the word that I'll be using all the time, so a vector, what's a vector? A vector is basically just a list of floating point numbers, something like that, although usually it's uh, a little bit longer. Practically, at least in benchmarks, I've seen vectors from 20 to 2,000 numbers. OpenAI, if you use OpenAI API to convert something into vectors, text into vectors, you can do, it generally does 1500 and can also do 3000 3, numbers per vector, depending on the model you, you enable in the OpenAI. And when you search, you always search for the nearest vector. That is, you need to find like five most closest vector to whatever user wants to find. And then you, when you find those vectors, you find the original text or images or music that correspond that was used to generate those vectors this is what user was looking for unlike most other almost all other database uh, technologies like where close and whatever search for vectors is approximate so it's not guaranteed that it'll find the most closest vectors that you need but they should be good enough and there's a numerical measure to to measure how good the search, how, how approximate the search is and how close it is to the exact one. It's called recall and I'll show you it later on the slides. So yeah, so this is the, this is the basic of technology. So this is how it works now in MariaDB. First you create a table. It's a database, you store data in tables. There's no vector type at the moment. So you just use blob and you create a, create a vector index. You can specify parameters when creating a vector index, which affect how fast or how slow it will be. And again, how approximate or how close to precise it will be. And the distance function, which is generally defined by your application. I believe that for if used for texts, then cosine is the most used and it works best. And for images, generally Euclidean works pretty well. But it actually really depends on the problem area that you 
where you write in your application for. After that, after you've created the table, you need some vectors. This is an example how to get vector embeddings from the Open API, from the OpenAI. And this is some, well, this is from OpenAI documentation, documentation, but I tried it and it actually works. And it's in Python. So it's not really difficult. You will connect to OpenAI and then you just ask it to create embeddings from your input text. And then you, because this is in Python, let's continue using Python to insert those embeddings into the database. Use MariaDB connector. This blob, it stores vectors in binary form. So you, there are two options. We can just pass those binary data directly from Python to MariaDB, convert the embedding to bytes and then send it to MariaDB. Or we can use a string representation and use a vector from text function inside MariaDB to convert the string back to, well, binary representation. I think that I, if I would be using Python, I would probably use the binary representation. No need to convert uh, floating point numbers to text and then back and send a much larger packet over the network. But if you get uses, for example, if you get a JSON, for example, from OpenAI, you can just use this JSON string directly to MariaDB without converting it to floats inside your Python application. So either way works. And after you populated the database with vectors, you search with them using a very SQL-like approach. You need five closest vectors, for example. So you just order by distance, and then you get limit five, so you get to get five vectors. This is pretty much intuitively a SQL language that you use to find five cl closest vectors. There's no special syntax for that. And this is how it works. Configuration. That's, so that's not question actually. So uh, you define the vector to be cosine already in the cosine. decree. Yes. So why do you need to have also an order by cosine here? Because if it wouldn't be cosine, you probably wouldn't really work. It will work, but it will not, will not use the index. If you use the function which is in, if index is not built using this function, then it, it of course will work, but it will not use the index. If, are you considering just adding a big distance yes. to automatically find that? Yes. Good. Okay. In uh, Google fork of MySQL with vector search, they use nearest, I think, without specifying the distance. But sometimes you just want to order use a specific distance function. You can also use it in select, so we have two distance functions, and you can use either. And that will work independent how the vector is created. Vector vector is the vector index. Yeah, but yeah, but the vector index. Yeah, if the vector index, if you're using to sort by a different function, not the one that the index was built in, you cannot use the index to yeah. find close. You just use the table scan. Yeah. And then you go for vacation. Depending on the size, uh, Elena was saying that for ten thousand uh, vectors of rather short size, it was very fast. Okay, fine, very fast. Uh, hardly. Well, very little difference with uh, index, with an index or full table scan. So why did you implement indexes? Well, because not not everybody is using uh, indexes with only four dimensions. Mm -hmm. If you use so few hundreds of dimensions. example was with only four dimensions. Yeah, with very, with very, very short indexes and, and with millions there was already a difference. So there's only a few, few knobs to configure the index. So First two are simple. In the index, the HAS and SW algorithm that we implement, which is short for hierarchical navigable small worlds, it's, it's supposed to be used, so it's in memory algorithm, it's supposed for the whole index to be loaded in memory. So the cache size box should be ideally big enough to, for the whole index to fit in memory. If it's not, then it'll be loading from the table all the time and it'll be much slower. But, but thanks to compact representation of the numbers, I can feed, well, it can feed uh, a, like about a billion of uh, floating point numbers into 3.5 gigabytes. So I've never, in all the benchmarks, even with larger data sets, I never went over four gigabytes of memory. So it's, it doesn't need a lot. 
and the distance function. We think it's per table. Somebody running things on different tables. With yes, the yes. But uh, I also believe it would be very uncommon to have many tables with vector indexes in one uh, installation. Usually, people just have one. And uh, distance function, it's again, you set it to whatever is works best in your problem area. It's not something you can particularly tune. And the, the other two are tuning parameters, and I'll talk about them later. So now about performance. So to explain, the, to, to explain these graphs, uh, this is the... On the x-axis is always the recall, and the recall specifies, because I said the search is approximate, so recall specifies how close it is to the exact. These were benchmarks, meaning the results is always, the exact result is known. Probably they did a full table scan at some point. And then it performs a search using the index, and then it compares this result from the, well, known exact result. And recall is the measure of how close the approximate result was to the exact one. One is exactly re result was well indistinguishable from exact and zero is nobody needs that uh, practically i believe you would want something above 90 percent 95 99 percent because like i don't know even if you even at 80 percent means you select you get 20 percent of your results are crap you don't know which one is which so 95 99 percent should probably be good with 99 percent means you can do limit 100 and you get one of the rows is wrong, which is probably better than you get from Google search anyway. Right, so, and this one is the build time, the less is better. And this is the queries per second, the more the better. Uh, participating databases where all the databases that exist in the N benchmark uh, suite. This is VV8, PG Vector, Ready Search, Quadrant, and MariaDB. MariaDB is red, the green is Ready Search, and everything else you don't need to care about. They're, they're all somewhere down below. And this is the, a very simple data set. Uh, and I have a typo there, it's not 256. Uh, of only 60,000 vectors. So everything, recall is very good, everything is uh, around zero, around one, you cannot see anything. And this is why the same numbers are in logarithmic scale. So this is 99%, this is 99.9%, .9%, this is 99.99 and so on. So this is all very close to one. And as you see from the build sides, MariaDB is, has the smallest build sides. And on the queries per second, MariaDB and Ready Search are on the top. MariaDB is slightly faster, somewhere between 99% and 99.95%, something like that. And otherwise, radius is a little bit faster. And this is logarithmic scale, so this is 10 times. So this is like about uh, 5 times, I guess. And this is maybe 3 times the difference between our MariaDB ready search and everything else. This is a larger data set of 1 million vectors. And let's do logarithmic again. And you can see that Quadrant has rather good uh, index building sizes for high recalls. But otherwise, if it's less than 99.9%, .9%, then MariaDB is still faster. And Redis is a little bit faster on searches, but everything else is down below again, like six, seven times slower. And but Redis is not a relational database, so and if you need an application that needs a relational database, then you cannot use it. Then you need a relational database, and then it's MariaDB. And this is the most complex data set that I've tried. It has almost a thousand dimensions per vector, a million of vectors, so everything is getting slow. And recall drops, for example, here, it's like 50%. Of course, nobody is going to use recall of 50%, but it's still on the chart. So, and here, Quadrant has, well, 
notably better index, builds the index notably faster than MariaDB, although MariaDB is the second. And though, although on the recall side, Quadrant gives the user the worst recall, meaning they optimize the data structures for fast insertion, but recall is not great. So, and, and, and this is how, you, so now I can speak about those parameters that allow you to configure MariaDB search and optimize it. You, you've seen the charts are always like that. Either you get fast search with a bad recall or you get a good recall with, a, well, but much slower search. This is pretty much how th these two values works. If you increase either of them, you get a faster, appear if you get slower operation with better recall, more exact results. If you decrease either of them, you get slower operation, you get faster operation, but more irrelevant vectors and less exact results. Either of them, they work identically. The difference is this one mainly work on inserts and a little bit on selects. This one affects only selects and does not affect inserts at all. So by having two variables, you can decide whether you want to spend more time on inserts but have faster selects for a good recall, or you want to have faster inserts and met, spend more time during each select for the, well, same good recall. And by changing them both, you can have faster both inserts and selects and better, worse recall or better recall but slower operations. So there are two dimensions, faster, uh, faster recall, uh, faster operations, worse recall, slower operation, better recall, and how you want to split the time between inserts and selects. Two variables, they allow you to configure those two dimensions. There are no other tuning parameters. Well, there are many, but they're all best. They're out, either out of tune automatically or best values. I found the best values and had to them, so the users don't need to configure those variables because the users actually cannot configure those variables. To configure them, you need testing data sets. And if you have your real life data, then you don't know what result is the correct, is the exact correct result for every user query. So you cannot even do that. That's why you only decide on how to spend the time between what operations and how to trade recall for speed. This is what, the, what database cannot decide for you because this is uh, your business decision as application writer. What do you mean by the M and the EF at the end of the clause? Yeah. <clears throat> so if for somebody who has read uh, the paper on the HMSW algorithm, this is called EF in the original paper. This is called M in the original paper. So I'm just showing for the and some databases, some vector databases, call them EF and M using the nomenclature from the original paper. I didn't do that. Uh, so this is more verbose, but still it's, it might be, even that might be too cryptic for users. So maybe it needs to be renamed. I, if you have any suggestions, please do tell. So where you can get it? Uh, everything I've talked about and more, more, mostly on the speed size, on the tuning size, is available in the MariaDB 11.7 preview, which is either already uploaded to mirrors and should be on the download site, or maybe it will happen today. It's completely built. It's already in the process of being uploaded to mirrors. So like maybe it's being uploaded directly as I speak. And then it'll be in the MariaDB server release 11.7.1, hopefully, but it's not guaranteed because of our uh, quality policies. It needs to go through testing and all the bugs found must be fixed. It should be of sufficient quality to go into release. And I hope it will happen, but if it'll be particularly bad code, then it won't happen. Then it'll be delayed to the 11.8. But still, hopefully it'll be in 11.7.1. So yeah, this is what works now and about our plans for the future. 
on the there are I can split this into two groups. Well, I I split it into slides. First, what we need to do in the server itself. So we add in vector type absolutely. Then there must be a lot of changes related to observability, and I don't quite yet know what they should be. Observability. It's like performance schema for the server or information schema okay. or status variables. Um, so we probably need to listen more to the user input on that. But how well is the cache size is uh, the cache is utilized? I don't know how many. Uh, distance calculations were done, that's probably not particularly useful for the user. There may be many metrics and statistics about the vector index usage that we can show, but then we probably need to listen to the user input to know what actually makes sense to show for the user. You also need to add the power uh, optimization. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So, I think IBM said they could do that. They can help us do that. Yeah. JavaScript. Yeah. Yeah. But it should be on the slide. Uh, there's nothing could be on the slide. I have, the, I have this point. You can arm 64 comma power. Yeah. So, yes, performance wise, one of the most important, important features to have probably is the filtered vector search. It's when you combine the vector search with the where clause. Because for the vector index to return first, I don't know, five rows. It needs to be five rows after the where clause, so it needs to, to verify vector just during the search. We will, of course, do that. It's, it's in here. And it's, at the moment, it's only optimized for Intel, Intel CPUs, ARM. Uh, we absolutely have to do that. And we have to do power. I've checked power is very easy to do. ARM, I didn't spend enough time to study all the power seamed operations, so I don't know how difficult power, ARM would be. Power, power is easy. And we are, we are mostly developers here, so explain what, how do you optimize it for some CPU? I, I mean, I'm using seamed instructions, which is uh, seamed means uh, single instruction multiple data. Like uh, for modern CP, Intel CPUs with AV, AVX 512, I have one instruction to multiply eight dimension numbers there in 16th pairwise. So I have eight numbers here, eight numbers here. I do one CPU instruction to multi multiply them pairwise, and then another instruction to add them to accumulate of another eight numbers. And does they also work with your short floats? Yeah, it's not, they're not short floats, they are integers. There's operation to multiply pairwise a vector of that's also called vector internally, that's why it's confusing. Of uh, 8, I think, uh, well, 512 divided by 16, that will be what? I thought that everything would be floats. Why are you multiplying multiply the integer? Yes, because I, this is one of the things which, how, how we, this is one of the specific MyDB vector source, because I don't know if anybody else is doing that. Uh, Quadrant is doing something. A bit similar, but quite different. Uh, Postgres doesn't is not doing that at all. PG vector. No, they uh, so in the latest version they have uh, FP sixteen. That is sixteen bit floats. Yeah, and this is uh, this is sixteen bit integers. They have uh, like four or five bits more of precision. Conceptual number. Similar idea of reducing. And. FP16, 16, 16 bit floats, they only have those seamed operations in the latest Intel CPUs with AVX 512. My laptop doesn't have that. My laptop doesn't have, cannot do seamed operations on 16 bit floats. 16 bit in integers are easy, like anything can do them. Well, not anything, but my, my laptop can do them. Uh, power can do them. I, you convert the floats uh, to integers? Yes. The, Intuition here was, so I completely, so I ignore the. Well, I find well, okay, I find, I have the vector of floats. I find the largest one, I mean absolute value, the largest, 
I divided every, divide everything by that number, so I get everything from 0 to 1, and multiply by what? 32767. And, uh, Can you do that in parallel? Uh, well, I, fi uh, I find the maximum number in parallel. Uh, multiply, multiplication, no, not quite. You cannot convert, I don't think you can convert floats to integers in parallel. I don't think there's an instruction for that. So, and then, so I ignore, I have, I get much smaller range than actual floats that have exponent. But the intuition here is that later I just need to multiply them pairwise. If you have a very small number, you can get more significant digits with exponent, but the impact of this number on the total distance, on the total vector product, will be very small anyway, so I don't really need those, those numbers. Small numbers can, can stay small. If they are on, they don't affect the total sum. So I don't, I lose, I lose those. It did reduce the recall just, the recall just a little bit, but almost insignificantly. The speed, how much? Uh, which integer was 20% improvement, ju just on that. Um, yeah, so those just four different features that I managed to put on one slide, everything else is in here. And the, the other uh, like direction of development that we need to do is to make known and used uh, frameworks to use MariaDB, so starting from Longchain and Llama Index and then others depending on what's popular and what users will ask us about. That's pretty much the development plan. Thank you. The MariaDB Foundation is the global contact point for collaboration on MariaDB server. Our work is made possible thanks to the support of our sponsors.